organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, the Campus Recreational Center faced a major hit because of a single soccer ball. Find out how. And we're looking at the anticipation for one play's opening night. And in sports, Iowa football reflects on National Signing Day and we take a look at men hoops versus Michigan. We've got all of that and more coming up next. You're watching Daily Iowan TV. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Michelle Nago. And I'm Mary Caldwell. We're going to begin tonight with a weather update to prepare you for what's to come this evening. We'll send it over to Austin Love in the weather studio. Thanks guys. Anyone who's walking to class knows it is freezing out there. I'm still thawing out myself from the walk over here, but it's looking to get much colder tonight. Be prepared for a drop in temps as low as negative 12. But as cold as it is tonight, we're looking ahead to a change later this week. Stick around for more. Thanks, Austin. And one soccer ball put an entire gym at the university's campus, recreation and wellness center, temporarily out of order. Daily Iowa TV's Cole Johnson has the story. Repairs are currently underway for the Mac gym after a group of students playing soccer broke a sprinkler head last week, causing 600 gallons of water to flood the gymnasium and the locker rooms below. This CRWC is working with Service Pro to fix the issues. What they're doing is they're trying to dry out the boards and, or the wood that's in the, on the gym floor. And we don't know how long it's going to take. Um, we figured um, they said at least 14 days to dry everything out. And then we'll have to assess at that time whether we'll have to come in and probably sand the floor and actually refinish the, the floor. Even though one gym has been closed off, the recreation center is just as busy as ever. To prevent problems like this happening in the future, new rules on the indoor pickup soccer games and precautions on the sprinkler systems may be put into play. We're going to look at some different netting that maybe we need to put around the MAC gym uh, that would go all the way up to the track so the balls wouldn't fly on top of the up on the tr track too. Um, so we've got sprinkler heads we're looking at. Maybe we need to put some different um, like netting or grill drills. The bills and invoices have yet to come in, so the Recreation Center at this moment in time is not sure how much this flood is going to cost. Reporting from Iowa City, Cole Johnson, Daily Iowan TV. Depending on the extent of the damage, the MAC gym may be closed for an even longer period of time. You're going to want to keep an eye out for a play debuting tomorrow night. The play Good Kids is taking the serious issue of sexual assault and raising awareness on the UI campus through theater. The Big Ten Theater Consortium produced this play and plans on doing one every year about campus issues. By combining art with social issues, organizations hope to continue the discussion. This play just needs to be seen by young people and I think it's very important that this play is being produced in large college campuses because we have terrible problems with sexual assault. They will be performing at the David Thayer Theater on multiple days until February 15th. Learning about Chinese culture here at the UI can be enlightening, but it can also be a good form of exercise, relaxation, and healthiness. The Confucius Institute at the University of Iowa offers Iowans courses in Chinese language and culture. Tai Chi is just one of those courses. In it, students learn the fundamentals of Tai Chi, a Chinese practice that has been, in effect, has been an effective means for flexibility, relaxation, and stress control. The program is open to the public and students of all abilities are welcome. Each course is led by Tai Chi, tai chi trainer, Mr. Chen, who teaches not only the basic movements of Tai Chi, but also its origins and meaning. They are educational, they are physical, they are enlightening, and the Confucius Institute is a wonderful asset for the community. I, I can do as little or as much as I want away from the classroom, but having the structured atmosphere once a week where we do an entire walkthrough is, is really spot on. Mr. Chen's Tai Chi courses are only offered once a year, so if you don't hurry, you could miss out. Still to come on Daily Iowa TV, Iowa is seeing an unexpected increase in our national bird. 
And in sports, we'll take a look at one Iowa Hawkeye fan that has just as much dedication as our sports teams. But you know, Michelle, my car got stuck again in the snow today. Yeah, I am so sick of the so snow. So sick of but it. But let's throw it over to Austin Love in the weather studio to see how the forecast is for this week. Austin. Well, Mary, don't worry about getting stuck in the snow this week, but do not forget your jacket. As I mentioned earlier, temps could reach as low as negative 12 tonight. With these low temps, limit how long you're outside as you're at danger of frostbite after only a half hour. If you, do have to be, if you do have to be outside, be prepared with hats and gloves. These cold temps are going to stick around tomorrow. In the morning, temps will be a bone shivering negative nine. By lunchtime, it will be around negative two, and in the evening, it will reach 12 degrees. A tundra out there tomorrow, but this weekend is going to be a little warmer. As we look into our, your extended forecast for the week, put away the shovels for the time being. On Friday, we are looking at a high of 32 with partly cloudy skies. We can look forward to Saturday reaching the 40s. Monday, we are looking at another drop in temperatures, but the sun might peak out by Tuesday. That's all I have for here for the weather studio. Make sure to bundle up out there. I'm Austin Love. Back to you, ladies. Thanks, Austin. And if you've been near the river lately, then you've probably seen a few eagles flying around. But as they migrate down south during the winter, some are injured. Our reporter Kramer Anderson went to see what one organization is doing to help them. While the cold of winter has a lot of people in Iowa complaining, many eagles are enjoying the cooler temperatures. Thousands of eagles migrate down from Canada each year looking for warmer weather. And each year, many of them are injured by barbed wire, power lines, and cars. Thankfully, the McBride Raptor Project was created to help treat the injured birds. The Raptor Project takes in about 150 birds of prey each year to rehabilitate and hopefully release them back into the wild. Well, every bird that comes in gets a full examination and is seen by a licensed veterinarian. Uh, we assess the problem, do what we can to fix it, and our main goal is to fully rehabilitate and then release the birds, keep them wild, uh, treat them with respect, get them back to doing the things they need to in the wild. Eagles aren't the only birds that the Raptor Project takes in. They also have hawks, owls, falcons, and vultures. The project also has a bird blind where many types of smaller birds come to eat from the bird feeders. So as spring approaches, the temperatures will rise and many eagles will be migrating back to their homes in Canada. And hopefully, some of the injured eagles will be able to fly back as well. Kramer Anderson reporting from Iowa City. The McBride Raptor Project urges anyone to call their office if you see a sick or injured raptor. You can call them at 319-398-5495. At least 31 people died during the Trans-Asia Airways plane crash in Taiwan today. The crash was caught on a dash cam video showing the plane clipping the edge of a bridge and actually hitting a taxi cab driver. The cause of the crash is under investigation, though a slowed down video revealed there may have been a problem with the left engine. This is the second deadly crash from Trans-Asia Airways since July. After a video surface of terrorist group ISIS burning a Jordanian pilot alive yesterday, Jordan is answering back. King Abdullah of Jordan vowed a severe response and wants to step up airstrikes against ISIS. Jordan also hanged two prisoners connected to ISIS, including a jihadist woman they plan to trade for the pilots released at one point. The pilot's father is calling on the Jordanian government to execute all prisoners with ties to ISIS. It was double trouble for a couple of Iowa football players last night. Seniors John Loudermilk and Damon Powell were each arrested in Iowa City for drunk driving within an hour of each other. Powell was pulled over for driving without lights, while Loudermilk was stopped for a broken taillight. And both received OWIs. The players have finished their college football career, so no further punishment has been given. You know, Mary, that is not good news for the Hawkeyes. No, I don't think Kirk fans would be too proud about that. But, you know, keeping with football, a big day for colleges all over the country, including Kirk Ferentz's Hawkeyes. To tell us more about, the, about some Iowa hoops, we'll toss it over to our Daily Iowan TV Sports Studio. Thanks, ladies. Inside the Daily Iowan TV Sports Studio, I'm Taylor Brooks alongside Jalen Socek. And Jalen, with that news, it wasn't necessarily a great start for Iowa football. No, it wasn't, Taylor, but let's not let that overshadow what a big day in college football it is, National Signing Day. Today, the Hawks signed 21 high school seniors, and we caught up with head coach Kirk Ferentz earlier to hear what he had to say on this year's recruiting class. Ferentz's biggest concern going into next season was bringing in more linemen. You know, we've kind of been trimming that a little bit close uh, in recent years, and, and we were able to get uh, three in last year's class, Ross. Reynolds was able to join the class a little bit later, and uh, but it was a real 
real concerned because we've graduated some really good players and we've got a couple more seniors next year. So we've really got to, uh, in our feeling, we had to fortify that group a little bit. Among the recruits, Iowa nabs nine from Iowa, four from the Lone Star State, and two high school championship quarterbacks. But well, that'll wrap it up for our signing day coverage. You can take an extended look in tomorrow's print edition of the Daily Island. But now we'll switch gears from the pigskin to some hoops for this Wednesday's courtside show. Fran McCaffrey's squad has now lost three straight, but they look for some redemption against Michigan tomorrow night at Ann Arbor. But this not looking to be an easy one with the Wolverines leading the overall series 91-59, while currently standing 10-4 on their home court. Michigan will be without their lead scorer Chris LeVert, who suffered a season-ending injury against Northwestern last month. The Wolverines' next top scorers are Zach Iron at 13.5 and Derek Walton Jr. with 11. This will be the only time Iowa meets Michigan in the regular season after splitting the two contests last season. Iowa lost on the road to the Wolverines 75 to 67, but had an impressive 85 to 67 win at home. And while Iowa may be taking the road Thursday night to face off against the Wolverines, we take a look at one person that makes playing at home inside Carver Hacker Arena so exciting. Whitney Blakemore has more in this special segment. Every team has that group of diehard fans who haven't missed a game in ages. But Iowa has some super fans who are more than just your typical season ticket holders. They are part of the Hawkeye experience. I met up with one of these Iowa fans who says winning is one of his favorite words. Not only because he roots for the Hawks to win, but more importantly, because it starts with the letter W. We all know the chant that circles around Hawkeye events, but one man has been doing it for almost 20 years and has taken to a particular letter. You know, W rules for Iowa. <laughs> section HH, row 13 for men's basketball, north end zone section 136, row 7 for football, and section double E, front row for women's hoops, is where you'll always find George Davis. And all of those seats just happen to fall under the W section. It just happened to be a multi-syllable letter that only the intelligent people can yell. So I yelled W because it's got multiple... <laughs> And it, you can't spell Hawkeyes without a W. This devoted Hawkeye fan has been to all home events for the black and gold through the good times and the bad. And even after rotator cuff surgery, it didn't stop him from cheering on the Hawks the only way he knows how. I got wounded and I was perplexed on how I could do a complete W. <laughs> so my wife had this skeleton we put in the front yard and I got the skeleton arm. So now I'm a full W again. <laughs> So whether it's Iowa, Hawkeyes, or winning, according to Davis, there always needs to be some. Davis mentioned how he was glad I was the one to interview him since my name starts with a W, but ironically, his name, George Davis, is W free. Jalen and Taylor, back to you. Thanks, Whitney, and you'll even be able to see the W guy tomorrow night inside Carver, where the women's team will be tipping off at 7 against Ohio State. The 16th ranked Hawkeyes are coming off a disappointing but very close loss to the 5th ranked Terrapins. Maryland edged Bluter squad 93-88. to It'll be an offensive battle with Ohio State averaging 81 points a game. The Hawkeye defense will have to contain freshman Kelsey Mitchell and junior guard Amiris Olsen. Mitchell leads the NCAA averaging 26 points per game. And before we go, wrestling will also be in action this weekend. We'll take a look at everything you need to know as they travel to Maryland to take on the Terrapins in Thursday's Matt Side Show. Mary and Michelle, back to you at the desk. Before we leave you, we want to let you know about the Daily Island Grand Giveaway Contest. If you read the Daily Island every day, there will be trivia questions about the Academy Awards. The grand prize is $1,000, so check it out. Well, that's all we have for you tonight on Daily Iowa TV. Be sure to tune in tomorrow night for the latest news. I'm Michelle McGill. And I'm Mary Caldwell. Thanks for watching, and have a great night. Iowa S-J-M-C. Want a major that'll take you somewhere? S-J-M-C.